So with a bit of the work we saw in 8.1 and 8.2 in mind in terms of what matrices are, what we can use them for, what they represent in terms of systems of equations, we're going to start looking at them now sort of in their own context. We're going to look at matrices just as matrices, not necessarily attached to larger systems. So first thing we're going to do here is more carefully define the notation that we can work from in terms of matrices. So when we're talking about a matrix, usually we have two ways of looking at it, where what we do is either talk about the thing as an entire construction, all of the rows and columns and elements inside of the brackets with a capital letter. Hence, when I say there, uppercase for the whole thing. Or if we want, we can talk about it in terms of its elements, where we use lowercase with brackets and we specify kind of a coordinate in terms of the elements. So our two ways of looking at this can be represented a bit more cleanly like so here, where we can either talk about an uppercase letter like A or we can talk about the lowercase letter in brackets, small a sub ij, to specify that the element we're talking about is in terms of those rows i and columns j. And when we think of it in that way, we can more broadly define each of the elements separately in terms of a bigger picture like so, where we look at those subscripts in terms of row by column location. So A11 very specifically refers to the element in the matrix that is in row 1, column 1 as a position. And then if you have M rows and N columns, the bottom right let me make sure that that's actually the way it said there. Yeah, that is. Sometimes you flip those. I don't know why. But the bottom right one, because there are M rows and N columns here, is going to be labeled element little a sub M N because it is in the mth row and nth column simultaneously. It is in, in a sense, the coordinate there, M N, in terms of rows and columns. And this is something that, again, like most of this, is just getting used to that language and getting to have an understanding of where those pieces fit that we're going to be looking at here initially. And it just takes some time to build that up and to have a sense of what it means when you see A17 or some other selection of rows and columns. And to help with that, we're now going to look at an example. So for this example, we're given the matrix capital A equals 4, 1 half, negative 1, 5, 3 E, written in or read in terms of its rows, where what we want to do here is identify the elements A12, A21, and A23, assuming they exist. And the thing is, that existence does matter here because it's kind of defined by the shape of what we're looking at in this case. So we do have to be a little bit careful when we're reading those coordinates, as it were. So when we're looking for A12 in particular, the fact that we are looking for it in the order 1, 2 identifies that we want the first row and the second column, which means that we're looking for that value in the top right corner, because that is the first row and the second column. So A12 would be the element in that position, 0.5. And the fact that I wrote it with a decimal really isn't important here, but just mention that. Anyway, for the next one, when we're changing this, it might be a bit natural to see A21 and think to yourself, well, why is that different from 1, 2? But again, you have to be careful with what this notation means and how it should be read. That what we're saying here 
is identify the element now in row two, so we're moving one down, and then column one, so we're moving one in, in a sense. We're looking for, instead, that one that's in the middle of the first column on the left side, which here would be negative one. And then our last case is also a little bit different from the first two, because when we're looking for it, You've got to be careful, again, about how you read these. That A23 is trying to identify the element that is in the second row, so the bottom, excuse me, not the bottom here, the middle here, sorry, and the third column. But the problem is, if you look at this, we don't have a third column. There is no way that we can get there, there's nothing that can be assigned to that value because there's no column in which for it to fit. So when we're looking for element A23, there's nothing there. So we'd say that this element does not exist, or it's not there, it's not anything meaningful in this context, depending on what exactly you're trying to say with that. And this is especially important as we get further on talking about the other operations that we can take here, because when we're taking those operations, we always work one element at a time where we're talking about these elements in terms of their position in a very specific way, that the way they interact is in terms of corresponding locations. And if we don't have a location that properly corresponds to what we want to do, we can't actually do it. But that stuff we'll see later. Anyway, just to clarify for those of you who might be curious, if you flip these, even though I didn't ask you to do that for this example, and you looked for A32, just for reference, that would mean looking in the third row and the second column. And if you want the third row, second column, that would be the number E, Euler's number. It's an important one that we may see later on in the semester. But just understand here that these, much like coordinates in the plane, have to be read in the order that they're given. That these two aren't necessarily the same thing, unless you've got a very boring matrix, and you can go from something that is fairly well defined, if not the very nicest number, to something not existing, depending on exactly what it is that you're asking for in terms of those positions.